Hello learners, welcome to this another session for the Certificate in Fashion Design program. Today we are here to discuss the unit 6 of block 2 which is uh, titled as Saving Needles and Stitch Formation. So this is the 6th unit of this particular course 2 of uh, CFD program which is coded as BFDI 072. And today we will start with the uh, unit 6 which is Saving Needles and stitch formation. So uh, let us point out what all points we will be discussing today in this session. So in this session we will discuss about the functions, structure and the sizing of the needle, types of needle points, selection of needle, thread and stitch which is very important when we talk about the garment construction. And we will discuss about the stitch formation, how we will develop different sizes of the stitch according to the uh, choice of the fabric which we are using for the garment construction. Stitch per inch which is an important topic in the garment construction, why it is important. We will discuss about stitch per inch. Reverse sewing and back tacking what is, is important in garment construction and general rules for stitching, stitch tension and common sewing problems. Like when we uh, go for the stitching of the garment, we face many problems which are very common and what is that, uh, that common problems we face while we are using the sewing machine and how we can use, what remedies we can use to solve that problems we will discuss in this session. And last we will discuss about the setting up sewing machine and its safety precautions like if we are using a machine we should always know about all the safety precaution which we should follow when we use any machine. So let's um, learn as this unit is written in such a manner and that when you go through this unit you study this unit you can gain lots of knowledge such as first how you can set up and use the single needle lock stitch machine like in the earlier session and the units we have discussed that there are different types of sewing machines we use for the garment construction. The simplest machine which we use is a single needle lock stitch machine and after going through this unit you can learn and uh, how to, we can use that particular single needle lock stitch machine and how you can uh, mount all the parts of that machine. Secondly, you can select and fix right size and the type of needle in relation to the fabric. Like in the earlier session we have discussed and we know that the type of the needle we are using is all depends upon the type of fabric we are using because we cannot use a single needle for every type of the fabric. So when you go through this unit, uh, you, you will be able to learn and you know identify which type of needle you need for which type of the fabric. Then you can recognize and describe different types of stitch formation that there are different types of stitch we form uh, used for different types of fabric. You can recognize and describe that types of stitch formation and lastly you can identify and rectify the common sewing problems what are the basic common sewing problems we face when we are constructing a garment while using a sewing machine and you can rectify that problems while uh, with the use of that particular remedies and you can solve that problem with your own. Uh, let us start with what is the sewing needle. So sewing needle when we talk about we uh, generally see or say that we have the one type of needle we can use for every fabric but it is not when you are learning a fashion designing and you are student of design you should know that every type of fabric for every type of fabric we need different type of needle so needle is the main sewing element we can say for the carrying the thread through the material during the sewing operations and it is the part that penetrates the fabric like when we see a, uh, any garment constructed, if we are new to how it is constructed, we can imagine how these threads are interlaced together. So this is the uh, role of the needle that goes into the fabric and the stitching happens. So it guides the needle thread through the material being sewn and form a loop with the lower thread 
basically we uh, needles we use in the sewing purpose like for the machine or hand stitches that needles are made up of steel so this is the basic uh, information about needle that it is the sewing element basic sewing element which carries the thread through the material during the sewing operations then uh, what is the main functions of the needle we uh, have in the garment construction and why it is used so the main purpose of the, or the function of the needle is to penetrate the material without causing any damage it provides a hole for the thread to pass through and so that there is at least amount of abrasion on the thread so to carry the needle thread down through the material and assist the stitch formation needle is used in the garment construction then uh, after knowing what all functions for, of the needle is and why it is important in the uh, garment construction let us talk about the structure of the needle so if uh, we are new and if i see a needle we cannot imagine that there are different structure of the needle and there are different parts of the needle which is named and uh, there is particular importance of that part in the needle so basically uh, structure of the needle as you can see in this uh, picture that uh, if we are talking about the sewing uh, machine needle not about the hand needle when you see a machine needle it is very much different from the needle which we use for the hand stitching so when you see a needle uh, which is used in the machine it has different structure and it is uh, different parts we have which is named according to their purpose and use first part which we say is the butt so butt as it is the small pyramid at the upper end of the shank it is shaped end that fit into the needle bar so as you can see in the picture that uh, at the end of the needle then we have the so uh, the next uh, uh, part of the needle is the shank so it is the upper end of the needle that is held in the needle bar by the needle screw like when we have uh, using the needle in the sewing machine and it goes uh, we have to mount that needle into the needle bar of the sewing machine we the part that goes into the need, uh, that needle bar it is the shank it may be cylindrical or may have a flat side it is usually larger in diameter than the rest of the needle so it is the larger part of the needle that is upper side and it is below the butt of the needle then the third part we say as the shoulder so this is the section between the shank and the blade this is the part where the needle tapers down into the blade so after we have the first part which we have is the highest point of the needle which is set as the butt then the flat part which goes into the uh, needle bar when we mount the needle into the sewing machine it is said, uh, said as the shank and after that the section what we have between the shank and the blade is it said as the shoulder of the uh, needle so this is the part where the needle tapers down into the blade then uh, fourth is the blade so this is the main section of the needle which we have uh, have and it is the long uh, slender portion of the needle that extends from the end of the shoulder to the eye like eye is the point which is the uh, highest point of the needle and it contains the long groove short groove scarf and eye so the blade is the portion on the needle which uh, we can say it contains or it has all the different parts such as long groove short groove scarf and the eye on the needle so this is how the structure of the needle looks like if you see in the personal just you can take a needle uh, machine needle and you can correlate with the uh, picture and you can identify what the section is all about one of the part we say as the long groove on the needle and it is long channel on the blade when you see the uh, the blade portion on the needle which is the longest portion on the needle the one point the which is longer channel we say as a 
long rib which extends from end of the shank to the top of the eye and it is located on the supply side of the needle and that is the side from which the needle thread enters the eye like this long groove part of the needle goes into the fabric and it uh, with the with that the thread enters into the eye and the next part is the scarf so this is a cut of uh, a cut in the blade just above the eye when you see the needle the one side of the needle is like cylindrical and one side it is something like flat on the needle so this is the cut in the blade just above the eye on the side opposite the long groove and it allows the hook to pass closely between the needle and thread when forming a stitch so this is the main purpose of the scarf then we have the short groove so this is the short distance uh, above and below the eye it is located on the loop tacking side of the needle that is the side form uh, which needle thread comes out of the needle eye like short groove is the part where uh, beneath that we have the eye portion of the needle in which we insert the thread so it provide protection to for the needle thread as the needle passes through the material during sewing especially in sewing dense material so this is the purpose of the short group that when we are uh, stitching the material which is very dense or heavy fabric this short group helps the needle to pass very easily into that then the next we have the eye portion eye is then opening in the needle blade at the lower end of the long groove through which the needle thread passes so a small hole which you see in the needle it is said as the eye and it is uh, the point from where from where the thread passes in the needle uh, so you can relate the in the uh, picture that this particular eye point and the tip of the needle tip is the uh, portion where it goes into the fabric you can see the long groove scarf a small cut just above the uh, eye point of the needle so this is how the needles of uh, which we use for the sewing uh, purpose in the machine looks like then uh, the point of the needle the bottom part of the needle which extends from the eye to the tip it is called as the point so the most important aspect of needle design is the point because it has the penetrate it has to penetrate into the fabric so this is the point uh, point section is the that point of the needle which goes into the fabric it has to go into the fabric then only the eye point will go and thread will get interlaced into the fabric lastly we have the tip the part of the needle that precise the material in the tip so this is the uh, basic structure what we have in the of the uh, sewing needle which we use for the machine and different parts and we discussed about their function why it is uh, on the needle and what its main purpose on the needle so this is about the needle and you can on a whole in short you can see the picture that the shank is there color size it uh, the blade part of the needle the eye point and the long groove short groove we have on the needle and the last is the point of the needle so this was the part or the structure of the needle we discussed then needle sizing is very important when we talk about the how we have to select the needle for the stitching purpose so needle sizing is important in manner to correct the correct choice of the needle size is imperative to facilitate good sewing performance like if we are using a fabric which is heavy weight and we are using the needle which we is used for the lightweight fabric our the garment construction what we are stitching is it will not be very perfect and it may get uh, damaged uh, we can damage the fabric so in order to get a good fit or the good stitching we should uh, select the needle according to the fabric what we are uh, using
If the needle is too fine to the thread to pass through the eye, the thread will suffer excessive abrasion and may shrink and break. So this would also result in a weak seam. Like if we are using that uh, that wrong combination of the needle and thread, we can have a seam or the stitch what we are having on the fabric. It is very weak. And uh, on the other hand, we can say if the needle is too coarse, like we are using the needle which is not according to the fabric, it is not thin, it is very uh, thick needle we, we are using which we have to use for the uh, heavy fabrics. So uh, for that, that also the thread may get distorted, there would be a poor loop formation like the, the standard stitch. Also the hole in the fabric will be too big for the thread thereby leading to a poor seam. Higher number indicates thicker point and coarse needle. Like if we are uh, number of the needle is higher like 14, 16. So it is used for the coarser fabric or the coarser needle we can say. While selecting the needle make sure that it is fine enough to pass easily through the fabric without leaving large hole in the fabric and it should not be so fine that it blends as and breaks easily. So it should not be that much fine that it goes and uh, once it is penetrated into the fabric it breaks very easily. So the while selecting the needle make sure it is not that much fine and not that much coarse. So there, uh, there are different as we talked about the sizing of the needle. There are different types of needle points what we have in the uh, for the stitching of the gum, uh, different types of fabric. So first point what we have is the we say it as a cloth point. So cloth point we generally say that the simple needle what we use it is said as the cloth point needle. So as the name implies the cloth point needle are used to sew textile materials. Textile materials we can say what we have the woven fabrics or the knits. So this is the most common point type which we use in the sewing, but, uh, sewing purpose. These are the two types. First is the round point and ball point. So round point tip it is pointed is uh, conical and a wide range of woven textile material is seven with the round point needle. It is the most commonly used um, needle point what we uh, use in the stitching purpose generally. So these needles tend to spread the yarn of the material apart with the dam without damaging them. So when we say uh, round point needle we generally use when we are uh, using the woven fabric we use the round point material. Then uh, second point of the needle what we have is the ball point. The tip of the point is the ball shape and these are used for knits like the rounded tip uh, uh, deflects the yarn thereby enlarging the loop in the material without bursting them. Like if we use the round point needle for the uh, knit fabric or the woolen fabric, it may damage the fabric or the yarn. But we, when we use the ball point needle to sew the knitted fabric, it goes very easily into the fabric without damaging them. So use uh, this ball point is generally used for the knit or the mesh fabric. Mesh fabric means which is very uh, very loosely woven uh, fabric. Hosiery or the stretch fabrics what we have. We have the elastic. It is used for the elastic materials. So this is uh, where the we use the ball point material. Then the third point we have is the cutting point. So these are per particularly suitable for the sewing of the dense non-textile material they have no gap within uh, their structure like the if we are stitching leather or plastic we use the cutting point needle because the point is very sharp and it goes easily into that material. So this is the structure uh, or the image how the different types of the needle or needle point is looks like so we can use according to the fabric what we are using. Then last uh, the selection of the needle thread and stitch length. 
so when we say that we have to stitch a fabric so stitching of the fabric it all depends on or it we can correlate the relationship between the thread needle and stitch length because that all depends upon the type of the fabric what we are using for the design or the garment construction so size of the needle thread depends fundamentally on the size of the fabric yarn or type of the fabric yarn that is structure and the thickness of the material to be seven whether it is lightweight fabric heavyweight fabric or medium weight fabric the finer the yarn the finer are the both needle and the uh, thread we have to use this would prevent damage to the material like if we use the the coats of the material the thicker the needle should be this would provide needle break, breakage like it is very clear that and you can simply uh, identify that if the fabric is fine we have to use the finer uh, needle and the thread and when we are using the coarser uh, yarn or the heavy fabric the needle would be coarser needle type relates to fabric structure round point for the woven ball point for the needles uh, knits and the cutting point for the leather uh, leather and plastic as we discussed now then uh, thread type is chosen for the compatibility with the fabric structure and fab, uh, fiber content for example cotton thread for cotton fabrics and so on so stitch length depends upon the fabric weight the lighter weight of the fabric the sh shorter the stitch the heavier the fabric the longer the stitch like this is the very important uh, point we have to keep in mind when we are stitching a garment because if we are using a very lightweight fabric like we are using a chiffon fabric for a garment construction the stitch length should be very small or very uh, very close if we are uh, shorter if we are using a heavy weight fabric like we are using a cambric or a uh, uh, casement fabric what we have to uh, we can use uh, the stitch length should be longer so this is the correlation what we should understand that the finer the fabric the finer shorter will be the stitch the heavier the fabric longer will be the stitch so this is a basic relationship between the fiber needle and thread uh, stitch per inch we say like uh, there are basically we divide fabric in the according to their weight like the first we have the sheer fabric such as uh, organza net voile chiffon for that the needle size what we generally use it should be between 9 or 11 size of the needle we use and the stitch per inch should be 16 to 20 in the same way you can see uh, in the study material and understand that for the sheer weight we are using the needle size which is between 9 and 11 and the stitch per inch we are using is 16 to 20 like in one inch of the stitch or one inch of the length on the stitch line we have 16 to 20 stitches and for the heavy weight fabric like denim or uh, for the furnishing fabrics what we have we use the needle size which is between 16 to 18 and the stitch per inch should be 6 to 8 so you can see the difference that the as the finer the fabric stitch length is also uh, more and the as the heavy weight fabric we are using stitch length or the stitch per inch is very less so this is how we correlate and according to that we adjust the stitch tension and regulation on the machine for the use. Then the stitch formation part what we have it is the like how the stitch formation is done on the fabric. So there are basically five step in which the stitch formation happens on the fabric. First the needle penetrates into the fabric taking the needle thread onto the bobbin area. Then we have the needle thread loop formation, then the loop forms, then we uh, shuttle hook takes the needle thread loop around the bobbin case, loop goes around the bobbin thread and it released. So, setting of the stitch like needle thread gets pulled up and it is 
tighten to set the stitch in the material then what is stitch per inch so this is very important to know that as and right now we discussed about this that stitch per inch or we in short form we say it as a SPI so uh, stitch per inch is the size of stitch depends upon the fabric thickness and the same stitch size cannot be used for all types of fabric it the needs to be changed according to the type of fabric what we are using so the finer the fabric the smaller should be the stitch size and uh, vice versa like the heavier the fabric the uh, coarser will be the stitch uh, per inch so the stitch regulator has marking on it when you see a sewing machine we have also discussed that about the stitch regulator on the machine that it is there are different numbers on the machine so you can just manipulate that numbers when we are using different types of fabric for the stitching SPI stand for stitch per inch the finer the fabric more should be the SPI then uh, there are common sewing problems which we face when we are using the uh, uh, sewing machine and we are stitching the garment we face some sewing problems which are very common and uh, we have different remedies what we can follow to solve that problem first is the needle breaking problem like when we are using the machine sometimes it happens that needle of the machine breaks very frequently so this is very common problem that you might come across while sewing so the upper thread that goes through the needle keeps breaking frequently when we uh, are using the machine so the common cause is that the machine may be incorrectly threaded like when we have discussed about the thread guide on the sewing machine so if you do not follow the particular sewing uh, thread guide and the thread is not mounted very uh, perfectly on the machine this problem happens with the machine then we have the upper tension may be too tight that's why the thread is breaking or the needle is breaking the the this exert extra pressure on the thread so what we should do reduce the tension on the uh, on the upper thread by rotating the nut or by the tension regulator you can adjust that tension needle may be incorrectly installed like needle which we have put on the machine or the needle bar it is not correctly installed that's why this problem is happening so you can uh, adjust that needle uh, needle may be bent or it is damaged uh, uh, not in the correct form what it should be and the needle quality what you are using or the thread quality what you are using it is not good or appropriate according to, to the fabric so you should just identify what uh, cause is with your uh, situation and you can uh, just remove that thing and adjust according to the uh, problem what you are facing the next problem what we face is the bobbin thread breaking so sometimes the lower thread coming out of the bobbin and main cause uh, lower tension of the bobbin it can be too high or too tight so you can adjust accord using the tension regulator and bobbin case may be damaged so you can change the bobbin case next uh, cause or uh, problem what we face is the skip stitching or the skip stitches in the on the while we are stitching the garment so sometimes it is a uh, few stitches are missing in a row of the stitches so what uh, the main cause is uh, the main cause for this problem is that machine may be incorrectly threaded follow the correct threading sequence or install the needle correctly so this uh, while following this remedies you can solve the problem then we have the puckering on both layers of the fabric like sometimes what we happen when we stitch the garment uh, we have the stitches on both the side of the layers of the fabric so when we stitch one side is okay with the stitch but the next another side is uh, just we have the loops of the uh, thread is not proper so the main cause is that needle is too large it is not according to the fabric what we are using so we can replace the needle both upper and the lower thread tension may be too high we can just check it and correct according to the fabric and the needle size what we are using needle may be bent or damaged so replace the needle 
and the size of the stitch may be too large for the material being seven. So it should be according to the middle uh, fabric size what we are using. So this was all the basic common problems what we are having in uh, while we are stitching or while we are using the sewing machine. Uh, so in this session we discussed about the needle in the, that needle is the main sewing element for carrying the thread through the material during the sewing operation. The ideal stitch are formed when the needle thread and the bobbin thread are perfectly interlocked in the center of the cloth. Stitch tension should be balanced for a good quality of work. Stitch per inch, uh, we discussed about the stitch per inch. The finer the fabric, the more should be the stitch per inch and thus smaller the stitch size. And lastly, we discussed about the that stitch formation involves five stages we discussed and the, we discussed about the common sewing problems and their remedies and how we can overcome that problems. So learners, uh, this was the basic uh, knowledge or the discussion what we did for the unit 6 of your course 2. Hope this session is beneficial for you. Thank you.